Welcome back to the BTN TV studio. My name is Andy Hoskins and I'm the editor of BTN Europe. I'm now joined by Jen Fuckelman from uh, Senior Manager at Nomadic Technologies. Welcome, Jen. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for so for those unfamiliar with Nomadic, do you want to just introduce the company and, and tell us about your role and, and the services you offer? Yeah, absolutely. So we are servicing um, the immigration and visa market. We're supporting our clients to obtain the appropriate visas that they need to travel. And in addition to that, we're developing the next generation technology to help with the automation of um, these types of applications and to just simplify things for our clients. And uh, I, I'm guessing the last couple of years have been a little quieter because of the lack of the travel. But how's that looking now? Are you, is business really picking up as the industry gets going again? Yeah, certainly. And one of the things that we've seen, even when things were quite quiet with regard to volumes, it was certainly more complex. Um, and there are industries where people do need to travel internationally and it does have to happen. And we are seeing that big surge in demand. Um, currently and some of the complexity has fallen away you know post COVID but all of it hasn't and there are new challenges that are being faced by by travel managers now. Yeah. And, uh, what, what, I guess what's the biggest uh, challenge that, that you're seeing travel managers encounter at the moment? Um, some of the biggest difficulties I think they're having is with regard to supply chain issues, um, labor market strains that we're seeing in all industries across the globe, which means that we have to do more and we have to navigate more complexity with fewer people maybe. Um, and that's certainly something that my team helps our clients to do. Okay, and so uh, I know we've heard a lot of noise around PWD, Posted Worker Directive recently. Can you give us an introduction to what exactly that is, please? Yeah, the Posted Worker Directives is a directive, um, and there's an uh, enforcement directive around this as well, which uh, requires employers to notify the governments within Europe when they have a foreign national, even another European, coming into their country under certain conditions. Um, and like most things across Europe, it's different in the way that it's enforced, it's different in the way in which the rules are made from one country to another, and that's where the difficulties really sit for our clients. Is it's global mobility professionals and travel managers have enough to think about without having to also feel as though they have to become expert in visa rules and immigration laws and now posted worker directives and a number of other things. Um, so that's how we help to navigate that for our clients. Yeah, you, you step in and, and take that off their hands, I suppose. Uh, and I, I'm sort of lo loath to mention Brexit, but uh, for those of us in the UK and just starting to travel again a little more frequently, we, we now have a new 90, 90 days in 180 rule. Uh, are you seeing anyone come into trouble with that yet, sort of over, overstepping that um, allowance? Oh, absolutely. I think one of the things that our clients maybe um, failed to notice pre-Brexit was the fact that personal travel um, actually is also included in the 90 days and 180 allowable days for um, you know their British nationals that need to travel to Europe. So individuals are not necessarily tracking their trips to Disney World, um, which is making it more challenging for uh, companies to know who to send and wh where they can send them at any time. So, and you, you have a, a tracking facility to help people uh, keep keep track of uh, exactly how much time they've spent out, out of the UK, presumably. Yeah, we have a, a suite of tools and one of those is um, the geolocation tracking, which um, is enabled on the application that our clients can download and their travelers can have on their phones. And when they travel internationally, they can use the geolocation tracking to actually count the number of days that they're spending across the Schengen area. So it's down to the traveler to disclose their personal travel as well? Oh, certainly, absolutely. And you know, there are a lot of benefits as why an individual would want to and a lot of reasons why people may not want to. And that really comes to company policy and it really comes down to the individual as well. And uh, I believe uh, opportunity for a plug for you. I think you've got um, a session about PWD later today. Yes, absolutely. Um, we have Yo Antunes joining us from the Fragman Brussels office at 2 p.m. at the Nomadic Stand J50. And she's going to be talking about uh, the posted worker directives and how they impact business travelers specifically. So that will be a really great session. Yeah, fantastic. So some more in-depth detail there for you. Uh, something else we're seeing as well, uh, remote working. Uh, that is definitely a trend we're seeing right now, uh, dispersed workforces. So is, is that a new element that 
not necessarily travel managers, maybe it's HR. I'm not sure who's tackling that, but it's certainly a new uh, element of management that, we're, we're, that companies have to look at now. Yeah, I mean, I think you're not the only one who's not quite sure who's meant to be tackling this issue. Good, good. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> I think a lot of businesses themselves are struggling to determine which department this sits within. Um, you know, remote work, and uh, sometimes it's called work from anywhere, sometimes people are referred to as digital nomads. Um, this it has been accelerated. It was a trend we were already seeing, but has been accelerated by hybrid working um, and the flexibility that employers are now having to offer their workforce in order to even attract the best talent. Um, and in order to do that, you know, they are often allowing them to work across international borders uh, for periods of time. And um, you know, the way in which they do that is really dependent on the immigration laws and what type of passport that individual holds, for example, can really have an impact um, on you know, tax implications, for example, um, as well as immigration implications. And that's something that we're talking to clients about every day. Yeah, so I guess when a company like Airbnb recently came out and said, it's going to allow their employees to, to work from, uh, I'm not sure the details, it one, did you say one country for up to three, 90 days a year, is it? I mean, that's, that's quite a big, big statement and a lot of other companies are probably watching that and, um, and uh, tearing their hair out with, with the logistical uh, challenges they're going to face. But uh, do, can you see more companies moving in that direction? Yeah, I mean, I think Airbnb is a pioneer, um, that organization specifically, and they, they sort of always have been, um, which is, you know, why I think a lot of businesses will look at what they're doing and they'll say, maybe that's right for us. Um, but I think a lot of organizations will say we're not prepared to go to that extreme and we'll find somewhere in the middle where they can keep their staff, their workforce happy and also uh, keep their own business as compliant as possible with immigration and tax rules. Fantastic. Okay. Um, lastly, then, just looking at the year ahead, what, what are you sort of anticipating are the, are the going to be the big challenges for travel management, or, or is there any new red tape or legislation that we need to keep an eye on? Well, um, within the next year, we're going to see uh, ETS, which will be introduced for travel into Europe. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessi necessarily see any huge challenges in that because a lot of travelers are used to these electronic pre-travel authorization systems through ESTA, so through the ETA, US. exactly. Um, but that said, certainly it's going to be something that we're going to have to adapt to as travelers ourselves. And, um, you know, in addition to that, there will be changes that we cannot even foresee right now. If we've learned anything, it's that we have to be resilient, we have to be ready. Um, for unexpected changes to occur. And I think we'll just see business travel pick up and um, you know, we'll, we'll see where we are this time next year. Yeah, fantastic, the, the mood here has uh, certainly been very positive the last day or so. So yeah, I wish you all the best and uh, thank, thank you very you, much Andy. for joining us here in the BTN TV studio. Thanks so much. And back to the show floor.